Hi, and welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today, I'm going to show you three small upgrades that you can do you with your Ninja Master machine, which will make your life easier. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, the first upgrade is fixing the machine to a fixed table or a bench or a board like I did here. Um, now, I'm sure that most of you have done that, but it's worth noticing that when you fix the machine to a fi in a fixed position, um, it makes your life much easier. And that's because it eases up the job of aligning your workpiece with the axis when you have to uh, engrave or cut the project. Um, in addition to that, I've basically uh, outlined the engraving area with this dash line or dot line as you can see over here so that I can have a, a reference point from which to actually reference line uh, from which to offset my workpiece and to align myself uh, easily for um, any type of projects. Um, in addition to that as you can see I've uh, uh, gotten one of those cutting mats um, so I'm aligning basically the cutting mat to the uh, engraving area, to the axis, so that I can have a grid uh, where I can easily position the uh, workpiece, okay? Um, if you want to know how I made the um, engraving area, I basically launched a uh, laser GRBL. Um, I've posted a video on how to work with that. I will put it in the description below. And uh, basically I've turned on the focus. So first I've been homing the axis so that the module goes all the way to the zero Y, zero X axis, okay? Um, after that, I've turned on the focusing uh, utility. And what that does is basically uh, increasing a little bit the power of the laser, which burned just a little bit. So then I've uh, basically uh, set all the step in the manual control to 5 millimeter, and then basically I progressed this easy, 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 and I went all the way around so that I can ensure that um, I have a reference point for, uh, for me to work. Um, the second upgrade, and I think this is a must for everybody, regardless on whether you have or not um, the fixed base, is this mesh. Now, uh, this mesh is not the size that I really wanted, but that's all I found on my local hardware store. And uh, I'm planning on uh, uh, ordering a bigger one. So uh, what this does will basically uh, reduce the chance of getting uh, this burnt uh, undersides uh, to, to the cuts. So basically I'm talking, if I can show you, I'm basically talking about these kind of uh, things. So basically, when the laser it's uh, going through his several passes and it's cutting, and then you're handing up with uh, the material staying for a prolonged period of time with this intense heat and smoke, which cannot be dissipated because it's at contact with the surface. And so you get these effects. So in order to avoid that, we want to have void beneath so that it can be eventually even uh, ventilated you know eventually with one of those fans like I do and you will basically get a cleaner cut overall the third and final upgrade and I think is the coolest one is this small um, knob which allow you to adjust the height of the module without having to deal with the uh, clamp and with the Helen key, okay? So um, basically what this will enable you to do is to transition from several different thicknesses of material effortlessly without having to um, to use the Allen key. In addition to that, for projects where you have multiple passes, I've been making some tests already, uh, you might even be able to um, screw up or down a little bit, um, so you can um, cut a little bit thicker material. 
So I'll now uh, center the module so that I can show you exactly what I do with this um, upgrade. So this is what I would normally do. Um, when I have my workpiece, I'm putting it under. I know what should be my the height of my module so that I can uh, engrave or cut depending on the project that I'm running. So I will then take my ruler and screw up or down the knob so that I can reach the correct height. Um, now, um, as you can see, while I'm doing this, uh, the axis is wobble. So uh, ideally, you might you want to do this as close as possible to the beginning of the short axis so that you can get much stiffer reaction from the um, structure. OK, so using the reference point, the bottom edge of the inspection glass, I can basically then so you can see I'm screwing right now. And while I'm screwing, uh, the module is going up. If I want to go down, I will simply unscrew it and release the module. So basically gravity will pull it downwards. Um, in reality, it's not sliding perfectly because I have a little bit of tension from the clamp so that I can avoid um, excessive, excessive wobbling while it's uh, you know, jerking back and forth. Um, so I'm slightly gently pressing on the nap when I'm uh, unscrewing it so that it's going down, okay? Uh, then what I do, for instance, I want to uh, engrave something on a thicker material. There you go. Now we basically pass from uh, 3 millimeter to 18 millimeter. No problem. I'll just... Take this once again, and I will slowly go to my height. When I'm ready, I can then launch my engraving, and I'm ready. All right, and that's pretty much all. So as you can see, there are three easily implementable uh, ideas, you know, functional extra piece of functionalities that you can add to your uh, machine regardless of the brand this can be any uh, laser cutting and engraving machine uh, open type like the measure master uh, series of machine and it will make your life uh, uh, definitely easier um, in regards to the third uh, upgrade which I uh, have designed with inventor I'll put the link in the description below so that you can download the STL file mm -hmm. if you want to 3d print it Alternatively, you could also go for um, a laser cutting project. You could come up with something. Uh, but the reason why I didn't want to use that is in the first place because I have a 3D printer and that kind of job is much easier to be done with the 3D printer. Because once you design it, you print it and then you can just assemble it and that's it. Uh, the other thing is that I wanted to uh, keep the clamp as light as possible so that we can avoid um, having this extra uh, piece of weight which had inertia which will cause uh, the machine to jerk when reaching the end of the uh, stroke you know when reaching the end of the movement and it will basically cause some um, uh, like extra burning or maybe uh, slightly overshooting where the axis is supposed to stop uh, this is common if you have had any experience with 3D printing uh, when you uh, 3D print something uh, that you find the edges having this kind of uh, hump or wobbling effect uh, which can be corrected usually with a slicer software slicing software uh, you can uh, usually set uh, the, the acceleration and the jerking uh, during the 3D printing so that you can minimize this kind of uh, uh, thing. So, but anyway, the idea is to keep the uh, module the lightest possible. So that's why I did it in plastic, bearing in mind that uh, it has a 15% uh, rectilinear infill, which means it's basically hollow, so it's a very uh, light component. 
Uh, while with wood, you would have to have a part disassembly to be done in a different way. Uh, then you had to glue down some uh, nut, X nut, then to put a real screw. Um, and then, uh, you know, this is basically how that way. All right, um, this is pretty much all. Uh, let me know in the comment below which one of the three uh, upgrade you think is the uh, coolest or it might come more helpful to you for your uh, uh, work process. Um, and if you have any other comments, leave them below. I hope you found the video helpful. Uh, click the thumb up button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more video like this one. Ciao for now!